the following announcement has been paid for by the Hybrid Nation. Hey, what's good everyone? It's what's up everyone? It's Angel Medina. I'm back once again with another podcast. And no, this is not the website launch. That's going to come later tonight. So, you know, if you, if you think I'm launching the website yet, sorry to disappoint you. Uh, a, a couple of more things that need to be ironed out, but not much longer. Not, not, not much longer. As you notice, I'm in color right now. I know usually most of my videos have been uh, black and white, but yeah, I decided that, you know, since it's 5 o'clock, I want to just show off my 5 o'clock shadow. <laughs> oh, I need some knack of one. But anyway, that's nice. That's, uh, that's just a little joke in there, just to. Uh, <laughs> And, and but to, but but this bit but but the idea of this video is you know I'm, I'm sure you checked out my first author you know Q and A, but I but but you know but that's that was back in May and I think and this is uh this is like October so you're talking about May, June, July, August, September, that's about six months that passed so you know I figured you know let's let me do another Q and A you know uh, an, an updated one, you know. That I that I did recently. So so, and you know, and obviously, you know, on the on the comment section, you can you can ask me any question down in the comment section. You know, any anything I didn't get to or anything you might to know about me, you could put it down in the comment section, and I'll give and I'll give you a reply. You know, anything you know, author related, and you know, a couple of personal things. You know, but. You know, but if it's a little too personal, then I'll I'll have to uh, let you know kindly that I can't answer that, or you know, or you know, I'm not, I can't answer that with a straight face. So anyway, so let's get this part. Let's get this thing started, shall we? So let's get this off the end. So I did an off the interview around a, recently with another company called Ebook Bump. So you know, trying to. You know, as I, you know, spend my influence and just in time for the website launch that I, I'm still rather excited about. You know, and it, and it starts off by saying, you know, what drove me to write the Thousand Years of War? I know, you know, I, I talked about that in my first video, but let me get a little deeper into that. You know, I decided to write the Thousand Years of War series. Not, not, not that it's just more than one book, it's uh, two books in and uh, the third one, uh, way to come out, you know, later this year, you know, because it's always been a passion of mine, you know, why it's been a passion of mine for, for, for 10 plus years, I'm sure you read that in my blog post on LinkedIn or, but if, if you haven't or you want to hear it from my mouth, here, there it goes, you know, I, I'm just the kind of guy that makes the great stories out of nowhere and show, you know, and show the world stories, you know, that no one else will be able to come up with, you know, that, you know, original stories that only I could see, I could come up with. You know, I write because I'm off the art, and you know, it's a great alternative to watching television since, you know, since I'm not watching television like I used to, or I refuse to watch television, or get driven into a, you know, get driven into the politics of things, or get driven into politics, and, you know, period. You know, or, you know, or in other words, you know, I, I, instead of watching somebody else's story on television, you know, I say, I could do better than that. I could write a story just as good or even better, and it'd be my own. So you know that, that was my inspiration, and I you know and I grew up in a in a, in a household that was that was you know I grew up with sci-fi, video games, sci-fi books. You know I grew up in sci-fi environment. I was I was actually raised without a nibble in me. You know I wasn't I, I was you know I wasn't raised too conservative in me. I was kind of allowed to play anything I wanted when I was a kid, watch anything I want. So. So I got hooked on uh, sci-fi, and I, I would write new short stories, you know, even outside of school assignments. You know, I would write short stories for school assignments, and I ace them every time. But even even when it wasn't for, you know, an assignment, it was just for my own pleasure, just for my own, just for my own, you know, own doing. I mean, I don't have those stories anymore because those were written in like a seventh, sixth grade metal. So obviously, you know, I can't carry that now. But you know, but it just shows I've been into this. You know, writing thing for a long time. You know, it's now that I've kind of to do it professionally, and I'm proud to say that I have uh, three books published already. 
the Thousand Years War, Flame, the second book of the Thousand Years War, and uh, the Angel's Nightmare Adventure, which came out last weekend. And uh, Revenge of the Groobers, the third book of the Thousand Years War, is coming out uh, very soon. Not this month, or maybe even next, probably sometime in December. It's smoking warm like now. I, I thought I could get out by November, but it was looking more like a December release rather than a November, so. Oh, but that subject to change as well. If, if, if there's any more than there, that's why I haven't been able to put a, a set date on it. And I'm not going to un, unless I'm sure of it. So so if you ask me when the, 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 the book is coming out, I can't give you a real answer right now. Well, question number two. How long have you been waiting? Like I said, like I think I kind of answered that in the first question. I've been waiting for about 13 years on and off, but I've only started right professionally this year. So, you know, I kind of answered that question before, but, you know, just to re it. And third question, how long did it take you to write the book? How long did it take me to write the Thousand Years War book, my first book? I started the Thousand Years War, the, the first book, back in uh, February. But, and with much determination, you know, I would say of my, night and day just to get this thing done. You know, it was an epic novel, 170 wood, 170 wood plus 170,000 words plus, excuse me, you know, you know, and, and, uh, and, and with much determination, I finished it with May, and it's amazing how much, and you know, what amazes me though is what, I mean, even to myself, is that, is that how much I've been keeping the story in for pro 10 plus years, and it just blossomed, it just came out blossoming, and it came so fast and naturally, I didn't, I didn't write, I, I did not want to too much why this block actually. I actually the story actually came out naturally and fluently because you know I had designed it for so long. In fact for the first three books you could say that, you know, the, the story has been coming out fluently. Not now, you know, after the, the third book, now that's when things start to get I mean I have an idea what the four what the fourth one's gonna be, but it's gonna be a little more, more wide spot because I didn't expect it to go that far, but I think I really think it's gonna go that even further than that, possibly. And of course I got the other series, Angel Nightmares, Angel's Nightmare Adventure, which is right now just a collection of short stories, but, 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 but we added, but, but, but for now it's just, but it will be transformed to a novel later on. Okay. So question number four, what did you, what do you use to write your books? Me, I just stick with good old Microsoft Word. I know some people use, you know, Scrivener, you know, in these other writing programs that, you know, make story writing easier. Like, you know, you could put characters. I'm sure, my, you know, one of my buddies, you know, my writing friends, my publisher, Davis, you know, Josh Davis was doing, was talking about this in his podcast that, you know, uses Scrivener. But, you know, but for me, I just, just use Microsoft Word. Josh Davis, if you're listening, forgive me. I know you hate Microsoft Word, but that's just, that's what it suits me. It's it's, it's easiest for me, you know. And when it, for me and and when it comes to character plotting, I always usually carry a notebook and a notepad and note down details anyway. I, I'm kind of old fashioned. I know hibernation is supposed to be a bit of a new fashion thing, but in in that sense, I'm a little bit old fashioned. So, and, and of course, you know, I keep like, and I. I mean, everything, you know, everything we're going over, I could, I'll treat, I'm going to treat you to the link so you could check it out for yourselves. And, you know, I actually had a notebook since uh, junior high school that I kept notes. Right now, I can't find it for some reason, so, can't show it to you now. What, what question, next question, what problems did you encounter? Well, for the first book and only second book, you know, I didn't suffer so much from writer's block, but it was more fatigue. It was writer's fatigue that I would just push myself so much to the point where I was just need rest. I had to rest up for one or two days so I didn't, I don't get exhausted. You know, to enjoy myself, make my brain rest, enjoy the downtime. You know, and really I suffered from now a plot twist, you know. You know, it wasn't so much that the story didn't come to me, is that I had some, this story could have, this story I was writing could, could go, could have gone eat so many different ways it could have twisted this way twisted that way you know i could have done this and done that it, you know there's so many things i could have twisted with the story that you know i could that this book this book could you know especially the thousand years world book too and i'm sure he named you know jf fleming and other all my readers have read it and they've seen how the book branches out 
why the you know why the you know why the big you know in a big way why the why the fastly it fastly branches out and yet and 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 even with that it, it had it had even more room to branch out even further but but for that you know then that that would be a complete epic and nobody wants to read two hundred thousand plus words these days so I had to cut it short right there. And, and, and instead of, like I said, instead of fitting into one book, I decided that these other branches would show up in, uh, in my future works. You know, speaking of future works, after the, the, after the third book, I'm coming out with an Easter Eggs book, you know, which, was, which would go over the other, the other so-called branches that would have been in the first book, such as alternate endings and all that, but that's why I want to go into too deep. That's, that's for another video. How do you think? Next question. How do you think you've evolved as a writer since you started? Well, for that, I gotta give props to shout out to Benjamin Mundane, shout out to Grant Niceman, shout out to Bernard Jane, shout out to you know my, my, my favorite readers, shout out to if I didn't mention you, man, I'm sorry. It's just too many to mention. You know, you guys have really helped me and really encouraged me to do you know to do this, you know to do this, to do this dream, to do this, you know writing thing. You know, and, and you know, and you know, I've been like I said, I've been writing since I, I was young, but I only started with actually writing, you know, with, with writing actual novels recently. And ever since I became writing novels, I've become a lot more conscious of what I write because not that not that it's being put up for sale for the public to see. You know, I've I've known that writing is something you have to put a hundred and ten percent effort into. And with a great imagination, I'm I'm I've become hooked on writing, you know, you know now I'm kind of bowing in myself though. I'm writing, I'm doing these podcasts, I'm doing, doing opening a website, I'm trying to help other writers. So, you know, I think I'm starting to kind of cram in time. So, I have you know this this whole week I didn't really work on my third novel at all. I didn't really get into my career side because I wanted to. You know to get you know to get this website because I promise I said I gotta get this done. It's just been bothering me. It's been too long. And, you know, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a soft opening. It's not gonna be be complete. It's gonna be many more features left to come for that website. You know, which will be discussed in the later video. So you know, I've gotten a new found appreciate and out and the final thing I found a, a new found appreciation for other writers after as I see how much work goes into writing and publishing a book. Next question, is there anything you wish you have known since you started writing? Well, the answer is, I just don't, not really, I just wish I started earlier. <laughs> I just wish I didn't start, you know, too late. Next question, do you structure your process or go with the flow? I mix it, I mix with it too. Mostly I do have a structure, I do have a night, a plan and I, an, an outline of what to expect, but then, you know, as I go along the way, I do put in a few twists you know, I do wing it, I do put a few twists here and there, but, you know, I try not to go too far off the outline, but there are times that I, f I find going up, going out of the outline actually makes the book better, and I think my second book, especially, foot no, actually the first, well, really, especially the second book, I kind of winged it a lot more, and people really, I got some, not a positive feedback on that, so... So you know, but but really I'm a mix of the two. I'm not completely structured, but I don't just go winging it and just writing, you know, job wish or you know just writing random words. Next question: Do you work on a set amount of words per day, or does it change? Well, you, you know, to be honest, this week alone I have zero words written, but you know that's because I've been busting, you know, I've been writing over three thousand words per day. The previous week, so I kind of needed a break. But I usually aim for two thousand to three thousand words a day. But depending on the day, I could be a bit short. On the, I could be a bit short. You know, if I got things to do, or it's around a nice day, I want to hang out with my friends, do a couple of things. I gotta do some things around the house. It could be more like a thousand five hundred or a thousand. But on a rainy day, I could exceed five thousand words for the day. Or if I just got the urge to rain, I could just just. Well, wait. Let's see tonight. Once I open up the web page and get all, all this, you know, social media stuff done, I may do a little bit of writing tonight. Do you research or not when writing a book? You know, with science fiction books, you know, I do some research. You know, in the defense of space and regarding 
and, and you know anything historically like historical fiction is you know when I do mix especially in the first book I did, I did do a little research about the Roman Empire so I didn't sound like a, a complete moron but when it was if I'm writing fiction books or science fiction you know you don't need too too much research but it's good to do some so you know you're not you know you don't sound like a you know, you don't sound like a noob. <laughs> you know, you, you you make a new sense. Next question: How how would I describe my writing process? I look at my outline and I look at what I wrote the previous day and I build upon that. You know, when it comes to the process of writing the book, I you know I proof read the book once, then I save it in PDF, we read it to edit it, and then I do another PDF and and then do my final proofreading and then hope you know and then. Make sure I catch every error, and then you know just, and then just and then just publish it as I go on. What time of day do I find it's best to write? Interesting question because I write two different times a day, in the morning and night. When when it comes to like the afternoon, I can, I try to avoid the afternoon, cause it's, it's warm, and it, it gets quite warm in you know out here in Puerto Rico so. You know, and that's usually, you know, I like to spend time with the neighbors, spend time with my family, you know, do things around the house. So really, the best time of the hours for me, I'm like from 11 to 4, 11, 11 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon, or it could be 3 in the afternoon, or on a rainy day up to 5 in the afternoon, then I take a little rest, and then, I, and then, and then I, I also like to write at night, between 10 in the mo 10 at night to, to a, sometimes 2 in the morning, but usually I cut it off at 1 in the morning, but, you know, there have been times I've you know, burn the midnight oil so much that I snapped at two in the morning. Next question: Where do I find my inspiration? What drives me is my childhood. When I was born with science fiction, like like I mentioned already. And I, you know, I want to repeat myself, but you know, that's what really inspired me. And all, but really, my life experiences, the experiences I ha ha had in my short life. I'm 26, but I've had so many experiences already that it makes the characters in my book. That much more unique because I could put the 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 the, the, real, the the actual traits, the real traits there. I could give them, you know, that that, that power. You know, it's not. It doesn't sound. It doesn't sound generic. It sounds more authentic. What drew, what draws me to my genre? Science fiction. I just love fiction. It drives me away from the tough reality that I face every day. I feel that science fiction announced me the author are not more leeway or the most leeway when it comes to plot and character, you know, development. And my favorite part of the setting, my favorite part is that the setting could just be about anything. And my biggest challenge is trying to push it to the point of being almost believable. I mean, I want to make it fictional, but at the same time, I don't want to make it sound ridiculously dumb. You know, I try to push it to make making it believable. I try to cross that fine line, and, and at times it can be very hard to do so. But you know, that's me. You know, I like doing that. Have you ever tried writing other genres? I'm a horror writer too. I'm occasionally I do write horror stories. You know, I'm sure you know Josh Davis. You know, I did, I did a writing concert for, for him. I did sh some horror short stories. Didn't quite make it in, so I decided to just publish my publish the two sh publish your short stories and the connection of short stories, which is available to buy. You know, he liked it, and and I and so did I. So I just edited, it, added a new a new more detail, expanded upon it, and there you go. No, and no shame about that, but honestly, I can't see myself writing nonfiction. I, I can't. It's, I can't do it. I'm too, I'm too fluid with imaginative environments to write nonfiction. So don't expect anything nonfiction from me anytime soon. How many books have I written? I, I answered that three books. So let's go on to the next question. Who designed your front cover? Proudly, I'm proud to say I designed my, I designed my front covers by myself. Proudly. Who was the first person I showed my novel to? My very first person? Well, my, my best friend. Mariano, Mariano Hernandez, I should say. You know, you know, he's always open to, to a good read and he's always giving me good critique. But then I also show it to, you know, other, other authors as well to get their critique. You know, build, build a, a good amount of beta readers. Have you ever, next question. Have you ever dedicated a book to someone? Yes, both of my books are dedicated to my uh, girlfriend Maria. Uh, you know, even though we have our issues, you know, we have, you know, issues, you know, distance issues. I'm here in Puerto Rico, she's in New York, so. But but the, but the when I met her, she gave me the fire that I needed to get back to writing. 
ironically, though, she's a poet. I'm not. But, you know, but the fact that she's good with words, let's say, you know what? I may not be a poet, but I could write. So maybe, why not? Let's, let's go for it. Next question. How do I market my books? Uh, you know, I try to market my books for Twitter, Facebook, Goodreads, LinkedIn, you know. You know, but I try, but I try, but I try to be as, be as interactive as I can with people, and not just say, and you know, and not just say, buy my book, please buy my book, because I know that's not gonna work, and people are gonna get annoyed. You know, I try to build up my name and brand, which is what I'm trying to, do, which is what I'm gonna be trying to do tonight with the Hybrid Nation, with the new website. And also, I try to post things that relate to the book, even if it's not in the book it's in itself. But I try to put, you know, relatable articles. You know, it's not. Now, I even go as far as, you know, giving out quotes from the book or pictures or scenes from the book. So if you check out my uh, Twitter page, you know, or my, even my Facebook pages, you know, you'll get, you'll get a good sense of what I do. I, and uh, how do I do with bad reviews? Honestly, I haven't really got a bad review yet on Amazon. But, but if I had to, but if I had to, you know, I've been, since I've gotten so many positive reviews, you know, you know, I, I, I see it as maybe that book wasn't for them, but then if I, you know, but, but then, but then, but then say I do get a bad review, so I, I will use them to, to see what's wrong, to see what I could improve on and make sure I don't make the same mistake. Yeah, but of course, if I see my books is mostly getting good reviews and I see that one, you know, bad review, maybe it's just wasn't to the taste or it wasn't for them. That's the way I take it as, you know, like I said, I, you, 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 you can't make everyone happy. You can't please everyone. How much time do I do I devote to my books? I take an hour or so to market my books every day. How do you get your books reviewed? I do, you know, I, I do book swaps. I'm open to do book swaps, review copies so people want to review it. So, you know, if you want to review my book, you know, you're an editorial reviewer. You could do. We could uh, set set that up. Do you, do you, next question, how and where do I, do I publish my book? I do, I do self-publishing. So my books are available on Amazon, iBooks, Kobo, Barnes & Noble, Smashwords, and Nunu, and Google Play. You know, but the second book I went with uh, Davis Publishing Company, you know, he's a cool guy. You know, that's, but that's another story. Don't want to get off topic. One of the main benefits of being an independent author Freedom and control of how my book looks and how it's marketed to the public. Freedom. What are you reading at the moment? <laughs> at the moment, nothing since I've been just too, just too involved with trying to bring my name up and all the social media stuff. So I can't, I can't give you a straight answer. What was the first book I ever read? A Night, the correct answer to that will be A Night in Terror Tower by uh, one of my favorite authors, R.L. Stein. Which happens to be my favorite author, and my favorite book from him happens to be *A Night in Terror Tower*. You know, I love that book. I love the Goosebumps series. You know, I know it's a more more of a kid series, but even as an adult, I always try to see if I could get sneak a read here and there on Goosebumps, since it's, it's it's such a great series to read. You know, if you if you got kids, you know, try to get into the Goosebumps series. It's it's an awesome series by R. Stein. Well. Next question, where are my favorite places to read? In the porch of my house, in my bedroom, in my backyard, or by the beach? Which isn't too far from me. I'm here five, ten minutes away from the beach. When you read, do you prefer a Kindle or a tablet? Honestly, I, would, I prefer to read paper back when I'm in the doctor's office. So I, but when I'm home, I just use my computer. I uh, don't own the tablet or okay. Yeah, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, my mother wants me to eat, so I just, so I just want to, you know, excuse. I just want to finish this up quickly. Just want to finish this up a little bit, then I'm gonna be back a little later for the the website with you, review. Do you have any tips for aspiring wing off this? I say if you have an imagination, pages, determination, and thick skin, then just go for it. Just write your book, go for it. Go join writers groups, you know. But do it for the art, not so much for the money. The money, that, that comes later. Do, do it because you love it. 
white because you love to do it. Don't do it because of money. Because it's not easy. And try to know not to edit your work and design your own covers to save money. And to close, just chase your dream and do it without fear. Because remember, the pen is mightier than the sword. What can we expect from me next? What are my future projects? Obviously, Revenge of the Group is the third book. It's my next book. And I think I've kind of gotten into that already, so... No need to uh, bore you with that, with those details again. And of course, you know about the hybrid nation that's coming out there tonight. Where can we find out more about you? I, I, you know, I, like I said, I'm gonna, I'll treat the page. I'll put it on my Facebook page, so... So you could crash me on Twitter at Puerto Rico 05971. You could find me on my Amazon off the page, which will be in the, in the descriptions. You could find me on Facebook, book one, book two. You know, I got Facebook pages with my two of my novels. I'm on Goodreads, I'm on Smashwords, I'm on LinkedIn, on YouTube. I'm on, on a good amount of social media platforms. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this, uh, this Q&A section. I, it's far more sensitive than it's far more sensitive than extensive than the first one. That's simply because I I've, I've been for more experiences. So I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you stay tuned for the second uh, podcast tonight, which should be the website review, which I'm absolutely excited about. So I hope everybody has a, enjoys the rest of the weekend. Hope you enjoy this Saturday, and I'll catch you later. The preceding announcement has been paid for the hibernation.